Hello and welcome to an updated look at my Lego collectible minifigures display up on the wall of the room that houses my Lego city. This is all 25 complete collections that have been released as of the time of this video from series one in 2010 up to the Lego Ninjago movie figures of 2017. So let's take a look back at these over 400 figures. Lego did not invent the idea of small toys in opaque mystery single packs, but they started their foray into the concept with a bang in 2010 with 16 exclusive minifigs, including the pom-pom wielding cheerleader, the demolition dummy, and the fan favorite skater. I personally also really liked the nurse with her syringe and printed clipboard tile, and we got an unlicensed lookalike of Robin Hood with the Forestman. That same year, Series 2 kept things random with the likes of the Mariachi, the Witch, and the Baywatch-inspired Lifeguard. We got interesting pieces in the Weightlifters Short Bar and Barbell Ends, the Pop Stars Microphone, and the Karate Masters Trophy, which would be recolored countless times in the future, and even receive some prints. The first recolor of the trophy would come already in Series 3, marked for 2011, with a copper finish representing a bronze medal finish for the sumo wrestler. This series also started a tradition of normal people in full body mascot-like outfits with the gorilla suit guy. This year's green space alien was a tie-in to the Alien Conquest theme, and the rapper had a nice cassette deck boombox. Series 4 introduced the Mohawk piece on the punk rocker and ice skates on the hockey player and one other figure. A second skateboarder was released, this one called the Street Skater, and the soccer player completed the trophy trifecta with a bright silver finish. It was also great to get minifig compatible paintbrush and paint palette pieces. Series 5, officially the third 2011 collection, had the graduate who would be useful for families celebrating real graduation events. Lizard Man was a worthy second person in big outfit, and the lumberjack got a realistic axe piece. The zookeeper introduced a semi-realistic chimpanzee, while the detective aped Sherlock Holmes. I also really liked the new boxing glove hands and the early 20th century gangster's violin case. 2012's Series 6 was another iconic one with a lot to love and recognize. From the sleepyhead with his teddy bear, the very sand green Lady Liberty, and the instant fan favorite clockwork robot. I appreciated the surgeon's printed trans light blue x-ray, the inclusion of the skater girl, and the new accessories for the butcher and the mechanic. The impression I got about Series 7 was that it wasn't one of the more popular or memorable ones. I think Bunny Suit Guy may have missed the mark for mascots with the fully open face, but there were again some great accessories like the minimalistic flower stem piece with a bar instead of an anti-stud, and the completely unexpected and fantastically well-molded and printed bagpipe. Probably my personal favorite in this series was the computer programmer with his DOS prompt coffee mug, and shh, the little girl in the bottom right is totally not Little Red Riding Hood. <laughs> Lego called her Grandma Visitor. Team GB was released only in the UK to commemorate the 2012 London Summer Olympic Games. It remains the smallest series with only nine figures, but its limited production really bolstered its collectability and value on the secondary market. The real Team GB would earn 29 gold medals that year. Here's Series 8, which introduced the lovely pretzel that I can't get enough of, and it also brought us a new cup style of trophy piece with the American football player. Here we famously got an official Santa standalone figure, the DJ with headphones molded into his hairpiece, and our second cheerleader. The last figure at the bottom right was yet another Alien Conquest connection. Series 9 was pretty solid as well, with a lot to like, from the Cyclops and Hollywood Starlet to Chicken Suit Guy, another mascot-style figure definitely done right. 
Here in 2013, we got our first roller skates, a part that would go on to be used for all sorts of things in the future, and especially as chassis for tiny minifig scaled toy cars, trucks, and trains. The mermaid reused a tailpiece introduced for Pirates of the Caribbean, and Mr. Good and Evil was an unlicensed Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. I really liked the plumber's real rubber-tipped dual-molded plunger, too. To commemorate the 10th series of collectible minifigs, LEGO had to do something special, and the idea they came up with turned into a total disaster. This is when they introduced the uber-rare chase figure Mr. Gold to the world. 5,000 in total, prompting speculators to buy dozens of cases of figures at a time to pick through and immediately just dump back on the market. It was madness. So I got a really good reproduction Mr. Gold just to put in here as a representative sample, and I'm happy with it. There were cool regular figures in this series too though, and I especially appreciated the Sea Captain's Seagull and the decorator's super useful new paint roller piece. Natural order was restored to the universe with series 11, thankfully. This one had another pretzel, yay, the lovable gingerbread man, very good, a holiday elf with a printed gift box top, pretty cool, and a yeti with a popsicle. It's kept coming in with a coiled rope piece, welding helmet, welding torch, saxophone, grandma with gray hair and light aqua legs, and a female version of the clockwork robot. That's a hard act to follow. The Lego Movie next got its own minifig series, which included not only exclusive variants of major characters specific to that film, but also plenty of stuff to make Lego fans happy even if they weren't into that movie at all. Abraham Lincoln and William Shakespeare, for instance, could have fit into any of the minifig series. We also got the iconic and infinitely reusable disposable coffee cup. That'll be, what was it, $37, please? And we also got even a really good panda guy. The Simpsons theme came out of nowhere with first the Simpsons house and then this minifig series. Lego went with realistic shaped oversized head molds for all of the characters, which looked good either on their own or together, but really didn't fit into the existing minifig ecosystem. Even the Simpsons TV show Lego crossover episode drew characters' faces onto standard-sized and standard-shaped minifig heads, which kind of made for an awkward disconnect. This wasn't a bad series at all, it was just different. Oh, and it did introduce us to triple molded legs. Officially, 2014's only standard collectible minifigure grouping was Series 12, and most of these figures were about par for the course, with few that truly shined, I feel, though that's not necessarily a terrible thing. Some noteworthy inclusions were the Dino Tracker with Compound Bow, and she looked like she went with the 2012 Dino theme, the Pizza Delivery Man, who was well-received with his two printed tiles and printed hat, the Piggy Guy, who was yet another one of those mascots, and the uniquely black and white Spooky Girl. In 2015, the Series 13 Unicorn Girl did not go over as well as I had expected, probably because of the fully exposed face where I think a Gorilla Suit Guy sort of style would have worked better. I feel like the Snake Charmer with his all-new Cobra was also underappreciated. The Paleontologist and Egyptian Warrior were two excellent realistic inclusions, and I also really liked the Carpenter's new saw and printed 1x4 tile piece that represents a real-life 2x4. Hot Dog Man totally stole the show this time around, though, and understandably so. Then came the second The Simpsons takeover with what was officially called The Simpsons Series 2. Now this one completed the family with Snowball the Second, the cat, and Santa's little helper, the dog. It also fleshed out more side characters, my favorite being comic book guy, and introduced new variants of main characters derived from specific memorable episodes of the TV show. Worst minifig series ever, am I right? 
Series 14 was fully Halloween themed and very fun, bringing back the older Lumberjack as the transformed wolf guy, and also resurrecting the cheerleader, or one of the cheerleaders, as a zombie. Z-O-M-B-E, zombie! That's actually how she spelled it. It's an exact quote from her character in the Minifigures Online game. Moving on, the stony looking gargoyle was excellent in my opinion, and we also got two figures, Spectre and Banshee, with the new ghostly, dual-molded, partly transparent leg replacement piece. I'd call Series 15 generally average, but with some standout elements like the new skunk, the mop head, the printed classic space logo flag, uh, left shark, I mean officially shark suit guy, the unofficial ultimate warrior, rest in peace in real life, the Native American woman with papoose, and clumsy guy with his very well-designed crutches and new head cast piece. In 2016, Disney made a big push into our Lego worlds with a huge Disney castle set and 18 blind bagged collectible figures. Now, some of these used standard sized heads, some used oversized new molds, and then there was this strange swap between those two styles with Buzz Lightyear, who had a custom head in his original Toy Story set versions, and here switched to just a normal style. Now, this collection was a perfect pairing between two well loved things, appealing to fans of Lego, fans of Disney, and fans of both. I would expect to see another group of these in the future for sure. The DFB series commemorating the world championship win of the German football team, or soccer as we Americans call it because we're such rebels, was another limited region release, but unlike Team GB, this one included a full complement of 16 figures. Now I've not done a review on these guys because I don't know a thing about the team, the players, or even the sport, but they did include a fascinating selection of male hair pieces and a lot of brand new face prints for people who like realistic flesh-toned figures. In a brief return to collectible minifig normalcy, Series 16 had the costumed imp who looked like he originally wanted to get into Series 14 but didn't make the cut. The hiker was a surprise favorite of mine with his new backpack piece and orienteering compass. We got two penguins, one minifig scaled and one as a mascot styled suit. We got another dog mold and then down here at the bottom were the community favorite banana guy and the babysitter with baby, which was actually the second use of that new for 2016 mold. Unlike the Lego Movie series, the Lego Batman Movie series was laser focused on the franchise and did not try to satisfy Lego fans who weren't also Batman fans, though the lobster piece was pretty amazing. Now, this collection set a new record with 20 figures including a number of obscure classic Batman villains like Eraser and Calculator. They got some nice recolors and printed parts squeezed in here also. I think Series 17 was another fairly average one on the whole. A lot of people really didn't take to Corn Cob Guy, so he sort of failed as a mascot. I like the bunny and all of the Hot Dog Man's accessories, as well as the Butterfly Girl's pretty majestic wings. We got still one more dog mold added to the mix, and the Yuppie character had a couple of great one by one printed pieces, completing his early 1990s cell phone. On the bottom row, the Rocket Boy hit a wonderful first ever light bluish gray version of a pure classic space torso. Now for some reason, Lego decided to make the Highway Man on the bottom right a true mystery figure, not allowing anyone to even reveal its existence until very near the time of the release. That was astonishingly anticlimactic though. Finally, we get to the Ninjago movie series, which ties for largest with 20 figures and somewhat follows the lead of the original Lego movie series with a number of theme specific characters, but also plenty of extractable and abstractable elements. Like we get a cornflakes box, we get a number of civilian outfits, we get a great new bowl mold in two colors and two different prints. There are lots of useful new hair pieces, 
and then a couple of these funky sea creature headgear pieces that can potentially be used by themselves. The Sushi Chef is also a great figure independent of the context and features LEGO's second sliced sushi roll print. And there you have it. Almost 17 years, 25 series, over 400 figures. And keep in mind, these are just the Impulse Buy Blind Bagged Mystery Pack series that they've released. It's a tiny fraction of the number of figures that have been released in total over the course of those years. Of course, there are many more to come, and I will continue to review them as they become available. But I've got other stuff to work on, more different sets to review, and I have a city to work on as well. So thank you very much for watching, and stay tuned for more. I will talk to you again very soon.